to us um, to show us that we're guided and these things you can use in your everyday life. You don't need to be seeing someone from heaven and, unless of course you want to. Um, but this information is so that we can make a lot of decisions in our life but knowing that we're guided doing it. So today we're going to talk about the clairs and the clairs are our psychic centers. So there are different clairs. Um, and the one that's probably the most um, familiar is clear um, voyance, right? Um, being able to see. Um, some mediums can see spirit. I, I am clairvoyant. I can see when I close my eyes or sometimes even when they're open. I can see loved ones coming through or people that have passed and that's being clear voyant. Um, so everybody can sometimes see things, right? You can see things from the corner of your eye or when you close your eyes, right? And you go to your third eye. This is your third eye center. There's actually, if you close your eyes and you're doing a meditation, you can ask to see this clairvoyant eye that you have. And sometimes it can be closed, sometimes it can be half open. You want that clairvoyant eye to be open. So some people close their eyes, do a meditation, and then just tap the center of your forehead. Your clairvoyant eye is right between your brows. Um, so that's one of the ways that um, spirit, um, our higher self, our higher self is um, the very best of us and it's right here. And you should use your higher self as one of your guides. So you know when you're trying to make a decision and you can hear, oh, maybe not today or maybe this would be better or you're, you're listening actually to your own intuitive self, your higher self, which hopefully always um, helps us make the best decision. So, um, so your higher self is in here and um, not only your higher self, but we have spirit guides, right? People that we've had since we were born, um, that their sole purpose is just to help guide us down here while we're on our journey. Not to mention that you have that guardian angel that's with you from birth, from the time that we go home, which is heaven. Heaven is our home. So the clairs are all about your intuitive senses. Um, so a clairvoyant um, might be a person who can see or perceive an event. Okay, So a psychic person or you when you build this muscle up um, can see, a psychic may see or perceive things that are going to happen. The difference between a psychic and a medium is we go and we actually talk with your loved ones in heaven and we get to chat with them. We see them, we chat with them. Um, they show us symbols, so that's where the clairvoyancy comes in. Um, they can show us symbols. A lot of times I have my own list of symbols so I know when they're showing me something. I know what that message is for that person. They can also show you scenes from movies if they're trying to get a message across and we're not quite getting it. Um, they can show me people from um, television. So there's a, there's a lot going on being clairvoyant. They can also show you scenes of things that um, might have already happened or might happen in the future. Okay, so that's called being clairvoyant. So um, clear seeing, clairvoyant, clear seeing. Um, you may physically see a person, a scene, an object, lights, um, when you close your eyes, orbs, words, sometimes they'll just write something out for me. Colors, you might see the colors of the chakra system, the colors of the rainbow. Um, you might be able to close your eyes and, and see someone's aura. 
Um, so being um, clairvoyant is all about clear seeing. Um, and it's all about using the third eye that's right here in the center of your forehead. That's where your clairvoyancy comes from. Now remember, you might be able to see things just looking around like this, or you might have to close your eyes and go to that third eye. Okay, so how can you build this muscle? Because you can. So it's everything that's in our database, that spirit and, and everyone up there, and like I said, all of our guides can use. So by looking at pictures, by looking at graphs of a body to know, they can show you somebody's arm is hurting or stomach, different things going on. Um, magazines, I mean, just be aware of all your surroundings and take in everything that you can. Look, really look at whatever you can really take a detailed look at. Um, and that's being clairvoyant. But try to, try to um, look through ma magazines, National Ge Geographics, like get every, all the education that you can. Um, hopefully that you're interested in into your mind so that um, the spirit world can use those references for you. And so the other clear, clear audience, clear hearing, right? You hear voices outside your head and again inside your head, right? Like how your higher self, you might hear your higher self inside your head. So clear hearing. Um, you may hear sounds. Um, you remember how I said spirit can actually knock on the door to let you know they want to come in? Or words, um, sentences. Now remember, it's inside or outside. And it can also be um, thoughts. You're hearing someone's thoughts or spirit likes to use um, music a lot to get to you, right? So they'll even be playing me music when I'm giving um, a reading. I'll hear um, songs that I know that the person can relate to. So um, all kinds of noises that can pop into your head. Um, and how can you build this clear audience? Well, this is a good one just to use all the time in all of your relationships. Start to clearly listen to who you're speaking to. You know how that is? Even on the phone, right? We're on the phone and sometimes we're half listening to what someone wants to say to us. But really, if you want to build up this clear hearing, be a great listener because that's the place to start. Um, so what are the other things that you can do to build this clear audience? Have you ever just gone out and sat on a park bench and just closed your eyes and maybe listened to the birds or the different kinds of birds or the frogs or the traffic going by or children playing? That's how we build up that intuitiveness is by being a good listener and distinguishing what we're hearing okay so that's um, it can even be you know the click of a t clock going listen for the little things the little things um, outside outside um, and just just be a better listener that that's a nice thing for everyone right so the other clear, um, this intuitive center that we have is called clear sentient, and it's clear feeling, and it usually has to do with your stomach area, um, and it, 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 it reacts right here to your solar plexus, and it's um, senses within your physical body. So clear sentience, clear feeling. Um, you may sense the body's aches of another. Um, I'm also a Reiki master, so when I'm doing Reiki on a person, I can usually be guided to where um, they need a little extra healing or what's going on that way, but that's the clear sentience. Um, you also um, might just want to use this for your own good to see what's happening in your body. You know, sometimes we're just so busy, we don't take a moment to say, oh, what doesn't feel great on me today? 
right? Um, what feels a little uncomfortable? What's happening with my own self, okay? And you may feel also, this is a big one, the feelings or emotions of another person. So that's called being um, having empathy, I should say, for another person. And that's good sometimes and sometimes it's not. You know when you walk into a room um, and you can feel if somebody's feeling badly, they're sad, they're, you know, all of their emotions are right there. That's being an empath and you're feeling those emotions of someone. And that can have that um, double-edged sword sometimes because sometimes we can take that energy in that other people are feeling and we can take it in and then we'll start feeling it. So that's that's um, another thing we need to do is learn to ground others energy, send it down to Mother Earth because you only want to have your own energy, right? But it's nice to know you, you walk into a room and you, and you want to see the feel of the room. Well that's, that's um, clear sentience. Okay, so, um, so you've learned three today, and then there's one more, well, a couple more, but clear cognizance is if you have a clear knowing. These people, like my husband, just will say, no, that's going to go good, or no, that's not going to go good. It's just a clear knowing. Um, some people, they can get kind of labeled as the know-it-alls, right, because they're always right. They're always right. Um, but there's some ways to build these, this intuitive muscle. So I want to give you a, a few quick ones. Um, so this information, remember, can come from your higher self, your guides, your angels, a loved one in heaven. But building that gut feeling, um, you can, when the phone rings, who's calling? And try to guess. Play a game, play a game with building this muscle. Or you're going out to the mailbox. How many letters are in there today? Or you're opening up a bill. Oh, how much do I think this is? And see if you're right, play. This is doing exercises to build up these intuitive centers that we have. Um, can you feel a presence around you? You know, just um, try to tune in. Um, and how is a person feeling? and why, right? So um, there's a couple other clairs, and one is clear taste, if you can taste something um, without actually eating it, or um, clear smelling. I bet a lot of you have smelt um, the perfume from your grandmother or a cigar from your grandfather or just, um, hey, buttered popcorn or whatever it is that's coming through. Um, um, so those are the clairs, and those are things that we can make stronger. And so I hope this gave you a little information today. And remember, meditation is the number one way to build up that intuitive muscle. So please um, try to get into a habit of doing meditation. And at the end of the show, we're going to have a reading. So... We'll be back with you soon. Hi, everyone, and we're here with Lisa. Lisa, say hi. Hi. And we're going to um, just close our eyes and see who steps forward for Lisa today. Um, so I'm clairvoyant, so I see, and then I'm clairaudience, so I start listening, and then um, the feelings start um, coming up, and then I just put the message together. Okay, Lisa, so I will start describing. So let's close our eyes for a second. Take a deep breath in through your nose and out your mouth. And in your mind, Lisa, just ask your loved ones to step forward, step forward. They are safe. We are safe. All right. I ask God and Jesus and the angels to let me clearly see, hear, and feel so that you may receive a blessing tonight. Okay. Um, I have a young man stepping forward, but it, it feels like it's a 
picture of him young. Is your dad in heaven, Lisa? Yes. Um, and was he like in the 1940s or 50s yeah. with the white t-shirt and the yeah. um, okay. dark hair? Um, kind of nice looking, I think. Very but he's coming through showing me that picture, so you must have that picture of yes. him and you must look at it. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, and it was in that era of like the 1940s. Yeah. Um, he has a thinner waist back then. He has his um, shirt tucked in. Yeah. Um, so this is a time where he felt his best. And so he's, he's okay, he's showing me now what he looked like when he was older, but mm -hmm. this is, he knows that you'll know this picture of him. Yes. So you've either been looking at it or you have it and you've seen it often. Yes. Okay. Um, was he also in the service? Yes. Okay. Um, all right. What, 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 um, what war was he in? He wasn't in a war. Okay, I mean, maybe that's why I can't get it. Yep, yep, okay. Yeah, he, he didn't give me um, what he's in. So he's in the Navy, and that's why I'm seeing the white yeah. T-shirt? Okay, with it tucked in. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there wasn't actually a war, but it was in the 1940s or 50s? I think the 1940s. I okay. was only three when he passed away, so... Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So he's coming through to you. Let's see what your dad has to say. Okay. He's, he goes, she hasn't seen me in a long time, oh, but I that agree. doesn't mean that I haven't watched her grow up. Okay. He says, I'm very proud of the life that she lives and the way that she lives it. Okay. And is your mom still here, Lisa? Mm -hmm. She's She's in heaven because he's talking about your mom. Okay. Did your mom live to be older, though? Older than him. Okay. All right. So for a while, you feel like you've been left here without them for a while, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And you have siblings though, right? I do. Because he's going, hey, she has her siblings. <laughs> <laughs> so you must talk to them and get along with them because yes. he's like, I didn't leave you alone. You have siblings. Yes. Yes, um, at least two siblings, right? There are seven of us. Seven, okay, because yes. he showed me a, a ring, a circle like this, yes. okay. So see, he really did leave you with a, a lot of company, yes, he, he did. said. And he goes, and you know what? They all have a nice sense of humor, and they're more easygoing. And he goes, I'm so happy to see that, okay. Mm -hmm. Do you, um, you know why your dad would be showing me a picture of a motorcycle? My son just got a motorcycle. Okay. So that would be your dad saying, because he, he, I see okay. symbols, and he shows me just what I'm telling you, a motorcycle. So that would be him seeing your son get a motorcycle and just giving you that evidential mm -hmm. thing that he really is watching over you. Okay, and was it for a birthday or a celebration, or is there one coming up? His birthday is coming up. Okay. Because he shows me the, the cake, and I know when I see the, and it's a birthday cake because it's decorated, okay. I know that that's a birthday that's yeah. coming. Okay. All right. All right. And Lisa, are you married? Divorced. Divorced. Okay, and your, your dad didn't know him, right? Because no. you were only three. What no. is he trying to say about? It's kind of funny. Okay. Do you feel a little better off now that you're divorced? Yes. yes. <laughs> I hate yes. to say that. <laughs> she, she's better off without him. Yeah. And that's what she says exactly. I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't know how to say that. But he's, oh, he's better off without him. Oh, yeah. I was waiting for him to say something nice, something, <laughs> ah, she's better off without him. Um, he says, you can do better. Okay. Um, he didn't get um, to be with you long enough for you to know that he put you on a pedestal, but he does in heaven, mm -hmm. right? But that's the kind of guy he says you need that's going to put you on a pedestal, yeah. like your dad puts you on a pedestal. 
um, that husband, he says, wasn't treating you fairly and, and wasn't treating you right, and it was making you feel less and less. Yes. And he says, I don't want that for you. I don't want that for my little girl. That's not what she needs in her life, okay? Um, do you live um, in a house where there's a lot of grass? I don't know why he's yeah. showing me that. <laughs> yes. He says, ask her who mows it. Um, my brother and my son both mow it. Oh, okay. It's funny though because I'm Isn't wondering. Isn't that weird? Well, he like I like no one's ever said garden. that to me. Okay, because he shows me the outside and there's he's a like, big garden and he was an avid gardener and now my brother okay. has always maintained the garden. Okay, so that's what he so wants to bring up. Isn't that funny? Yeah. He's showing me all the grass. Ask her who mows it. So they help you. A, your brother. Yeah, right I now. actually live at the family home right now. Okay, okay. So that's probably why you're showing me the corner of the house and the grass too that you yeah. live where where you were raised. Yes. Okay. Okay. Is there um, a lady in heaven with an M? Middle name. Like a Mary, Mary, and um, an a M M A. M A Margaret. Okay, and who would that be? My sister. Okay, and she's in heaven, yes. or yes. Okay, because I'm just hearing the okay. She's just stepping in to say, mm, I got that M A part. So she's there. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And does she have the dark hair? Darker, darker than mine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah darker. Okay, she's coming through very young, like at 19. She was 48. Okay, so no, she's stepping through showing me, I think it's a, a high school picture or something that you would have of her looking yeah. posed like this with the, the hair going down. It that would sounds be, more like my mom. Okay, let's see. I don't know. No, it's your sister. That's she's like, sister. no, it's me. Okay. I'm like, okay, I'm like, and she would say it no, it's like me. It's me, it it's like me. That. Tell her it's me. Okay. I'm trying to get what she's saying to me. Hmm. A penny in your pocket? Have you been finding coins? No. She used to always give my son coins when he was little, though. Did he put them in his pocket? Just like a penny in your pocket. And I just have to give you what she's saying, so yeah. maybe he stuck them in there? He, yeah, he could have when he got older. Okay. okay. And who who she's talking about, Your is your son going to school? How old is he? 17. 17. Oh, and he's not going to school? Okay, because she's talking about school. Mm. School, 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 she says. Okay. She wants you to try to get him into school again. Does that make sense? Yes. Have you been trying to do that? Yeah, well, he's going to take a trade. Okay, well, that's okay because she's going school, 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 and that will be good for him because for him to get on the right track, it's mm -hmm. going to take that schooling, she's saying. Okay, so the whole family's up there watching over you. Now, who did you um, want to come through tonight? My sister. Your sister that yeah. we're chatting with. And what yes. do you want to say to her? She, she's a cute cookie, isn't she? She's, cute. she's really pretty. She was a big melt, so I wanted to hear a lot more. <laughs> well, she's right on it. School, yeah. school, school, and yeah, it's me, does. and blah, blah, blah. She goes, what else do you want to know about? She goes, tell her I see everything she does. Okay. You're all together. Do you, do you get um, sad at night time? Yeah. And then do you feel someone at the end of your bed? Um, not at the end of my bed, but I've been dreaming a lot about her. Okay. Because cause usually that's when they're there, mm -hmm. either during your sleep time or kind of like um, they know it's your sad time, so they kind of just sit at the end of the bed. Okay. Do you have a dog that's with you? 
No, the dog's in heaven. Okay, well, the dog's at the end of the bed, too. So, your sister's there, the dog's there. You shouldn't be alone at all, let me tell you, because she's showing... It's a, like a little or fluffy type thing, or it has longer no, hair. A black lab. Okay. Yeah. But actually, we had seven dogs over the yeah, years. Yeah, because so. I'm not seeing a black lab. I'm seeing something with more hair, okay. kind of jumpy. <laughs> yeah, we have quite a few dogs. Okay. So just know that they're there. When you're sad, that's when they're there surrounding you with love, okay? Um, okay. They're even, like, covering you up a little. Do you feel their presence at nighttime then? Because I th yes, think I that's do. what she's trying to say to me. Okay. I do. Okay. She said, oh, she says, we visit each other all night long. So you must have dreams. I do. I have dreams and then I'll wake up. Okay, so if they're, um, where you're having a conversation, or they're in color, or sometimes they're very... Sometimes they don't make any sense at all. Sometimes vivid. we're actually talking, and I can remember a little bit of it. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And so they're actually visits. Yes. So that's why you miss her a little more than she misses you, because she knows that you're having these visits. And she's like, oh, she should remember some of that. So put a little notebook and a pen beside your mm -hmm. bed, and when you come into that consciousness a little yeah. bit, write some things down so you can remember in the morning. Yeah, I really should, because I don't remember. Because she says you have long, long conversations about yeah. everything, okay? So she's right there with you. Yeah. So she's like, um, tell her there's no need to worry, <laughs> okay? So you're being a little worry wart, she says. Don't worry about everything. She says, okay, there's a flow to everything, mm -hmm. okay? And and it's, and it's she's so funny, right? She's like, the water's going to go where it's going to go in that flow. Is that her? Like, oh, she's, she's just a yeah. spitfire. Yeah, and she's just like, don't worry. It, it, things are going to get to where they need to, um, but just let them. She says, you want to control yeah. A lot, and she's yeah. going like this. And she said, "Not if you're going to try to control things, you're not going to be as happy as if you just know that they're all there helping you." Okay. okay. All right. And they have a strong faith, a strong faith, because she's got the Bible and the cross. And is there rosary beads? Where the well, were my you mother Catholic? was very, yeah. Okay, because she really religious. did say that and yeah. so she's like you know we got it covered we got it covered so don't worry so much she says yes. um let me see what else she's trying to say have you been shopping for clothes lately i have not been shopping for clothes because she's, i've gained too much weight and my clothes don't fit me and i refuse to buy any she's got you in the store shopping for All clothes right. okay okay so you can make the choice, you know. <laughs> Maybe later after I lose weight. She said, um, don't wait for things to happen, though. If you need some clothes, go get some clothes. So it must be something you're dealing with. Like, should I go to the store and should I just give in yeah, and yeah. buy another size? Yes, and I've she been said, one myself, yes. Okay. She says not to fight with yourself. It just makes it worse, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. All right. And with that, I'm going to leave you with the blessings of spirit and, okay. and all of your family. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, please, if you would like to ask a question or you would like to have a reading on the show, please go to my website at www.bonniepagemedium.com. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.